A man in a car on a motorway, thundering towards a dream he can't remember in a town he doesn't know. It's 191 miles to Leeds, I've got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's the afternoon and I'm wearing sunglasses. Hit it! But this is no ordinary man and no ordinary car. This is Arthur Smith and he can't actually drive. And this is no ordinary motorway, because this is the M1. Two, three, four. This year is a very special year for the M1 motorway, because this year the M1 celebrates its 28th birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. It was opened in November 1959, the same year that Harold Wilson became leader of the Labour Party and Russ Conway won the Ivor Novello Award for Side Saddle. You know, the one that goes a bit... And interestingly enough... And interestingly enough... And interestingly enough, 1959 was also 13 years before the third anniversary of the first man on the moon. It may seem like a long, thin, boring bit of concrete, but the M1 is probably the most controversial subject in the world today. In tonight's programme, Phil and I ask the big questions. Are there enough of these cones on the M1 for every student in Britain to have one in their bedroom? The little chef at Newport Pagnell. Why? What does marples must go really mean? And what is a marple? And the fundamental question, is the M1 nice or horrible? Let's travel the length of it and find out. Good night. Oh, Phil, not good night yet. M1 checklist. Check. Tires. Check. Bruce Springsteen cassette cued to Born to Run. Check. Earplugs in case of boring hitchhikers. Check. Packet of fruit pastels. Check. MB, black ones, third, fifth and ninth down. Attend to empty crisp packets on back seats. Check. Baby seat in position. Why? Well, you never know. I suppose so. Check. Arthur in front seat. Check. Seat belts. Check. Mirror correctly angled. Check. Nationality of Tom Stoppard's parents. Check. Method of payment in shops. Credit card. Wee! Ha! Let's roll! I'll drive off then, shall I? Yeah. What's the matter? Driving gloves. Arthur, we're on the M1, driving free. I feel like Peter Fonda in Easy Rider, or Mel Gibson in Mad Max 2, or Rudiger Fogler in Vin Vendors in Love Dead Sight. Phil, you don't get films like that on the M1. Real motorway cuts through deserts across the Rockies, miles and miles in the hot sun in an automatic Cadillac, air-conditioned Cadillac, Cadillac Kerouac, a beat generation trucking through the night, vanishing point. The road movie, Phil, it doesn't exist in England. Real motorway cuts through deserts across the Rockies, miles and miles in the hot sun in an automatic Cadillac, air-conditioned Cadillac, Cadillac Kerouac, a beat generation trucking through the night, vanishing point. The road movie, Phil, it doesn't exist in England. What about Genevieve, then? Kenneth Moore, Glynis Johns, there's an English road movie. <laughs> Or Summer Holiday, Cliff Richard, Una Stubbs, Melvin Hayes. Come on, fellas, put me down. Oh, yeah, well, in that case, Phil, you've forgotten the great English road movie, the one with the epic, symbolic journey at its centre. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Yeah. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang, bang we love you. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang, we love you. The bang, bang, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. My fine, poor, fended friend. Bang, bang, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. My fine, poor, fended friend. Gonna be your chitty, bang, chitty. Let's look at the history of the M1. 
Of course, a motorway is just a designer road. And just as the motorway has affected the course of the 20th century, so the history of roads is the history of all humankind. Just after time began. During the Dark Ages, the first amoeba in the primeval swamp split into two amoebas called Glippy and Gloppy. Glippy loved Gloppy and Gloppy loved Glippy. I love you, Glippy, said Gloppy one murky day in the sulfurous swamp. I love you too, Gloppy, said Glippy. Do you, Glippy? Gloppy smiled happily. Oh, Glippy, I For love... For God's sake, Phil, what, is Glippy going to build the M1 or something? In a way, Arthur, yes. <laughs> Except, of course, it's not the actual amoeba Glippy itself. It's Gloppy. I'll give you the history of motorways, Phil. Cavemen wheel, road, car, motorway, the end. But you've missed out so much, Arthur. Like the Romans, for example. The Romans were famous for their long, straight roads. Their failure to grasp the principle of bends resulted in them missing all the towns and getting their chariots wet. During the Dark Ages, who knows what happened? But then, of course, you've got the Normans. They weren't very good at roads, but did build some splendid flyovers. In modern times, the champions of the motorway concept have been Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler and Margaret Thatcher. And coincidentally, Margaret Thatcher is a direct descendant of the first ever amoeba, Glippy. Or was it Gloppy? He could have been Glippy or Gloppy. But with hindsight, the odds do seem stacked against Gloppy. So it probably was Glippy. Who cares? Well, a few miles out of London and we've turned off the motorway to see if people living near the M1 think it's nice or horrible. Some people think it's nice, some people think it's horrible. Excuse me a moment, can we have a quick word with you? How do you find uh, living close to the motorway affects, affects... I don't you? live close to the motorway. How does living near the motorway affect your life? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't at all. Right. It doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't affect like your 16th century cottage here or anything. Well, no, mine's 17th century, but it doesn't matter. Excuse me, excuse me, yeah, what, 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 what do you think about uh, the M1? I think it's terrible. Yeah? It's a planning error of horrific proportions. How does uh, living very close to the motorway affect your life? I don't live here. It's not working here, is it, Phil? Well, that bloke with the beard was quite good value, though, wasn't he? Yeah, well, let's go and give him another try. All right. Come on. The whole history of this motorway has shown up the public inquiry system for what it is. I mean, it's, it's a total travesty of democracy, isn't oh. it? So what's your main complaint about the motorway? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's ten miles away. Oh, right. What, and you think it should be further? No, no. They should have put it through the village. <laughs> Knock what? it down. Look at this lot. Ye oldie village green, 16th century oak bloody cricket. What you've got to ask yourself is, do we really need them? You can't do 85 along a Norman church, can you? John Space has been a motorway campaigner for 16 years. Since 1971, he's run his organisation Bulldoze Aldenham from the front room of his house in Aldenham. Janet, could you send copies of that letter to the Times, the Telegraph, the Guardian and um, Smash Hits magazine? Thank you. Space's living room is dedicated to a scale model of his pet project, the Aldenham Through Pass. And this is the village as it is now, is it? That's right. And when we finally persuaded the Department of Transport to come to their senses, then it will look like this! Ah, now, this is the village, uh, as it will be, and this is the through pass, as we envisage it. Here's the motorway services, where you could buy a sandwich or perhaps an ice cream. Mm -hmm. And here's the little car coming up for petrol. And here's the little man ready to serve you with the petrol. There's his little uniform, you see. Hello, oh, travellers. Yes. Check your tyre pressure, buy a book of petrol stamps. Oh, what about an island motorway's <laughs> window sticker? Yes, Thank yes, you. Very nice. Thank, Thank you very good, much. Yes. Uh, excuse me. That's probably John Moore with the go-ahead. What a loony, eh? Stop it, Phil. That's enough. Oh, come on, Arthur. Well, if I knew, I'd stand here and I wouldn't be able to do it. This is my, where I work. And... Oh, you've heard about the, the motorway that's being built right through this village, yes. then? 
I don't know about oh, this village. I don't know, it's coming right through here, is it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a through pass. Apparently, it's just going to take away oh. all the buildings around here and all the, oh. the golf course. Right, there's yeah. the well, well, we've put the wind up. Everyone who lives here. So let's get back to the M1. Sorry. Oh look, there's a hitchhiker, and look who it is. It's Ron Galaxy. Who? Haven't you heard of Ron Galaxy, author of The Galaxy Guide to the Hitchhiker? No. Yeah, he's the greatest hitchhiker in the world. They call him the Magic Thumb. Yeah, he's brilliant, he is. Shall we pick up a hitchhiker? Yeah, why not? Look, here's one. Sorry, mate, my mistake. I can't get into a car without Dolby stereo. Cheers, anyway. Drive on. Do you know, Arthur, we've had some of our funniest adventures driving, haven't we? <laughs> Do you remember that time we broke down on the A127? No. No, nor do I. Good Lord, it's Ron Galaxy again. How did he do that? I told you he was good. Oh, great, we're coming up to the motorway again. Oh, I can't wait to see the massive electricity generating station just before we get to Toddington. 